When it comes to Battle Shonen, you really can't get more pure and iconic than Hajime no Ippo. The manga was first released in 1989 and is still ongoing, which is wild, and was created by George Marikoa. This series is a very simple, to the point, and so incredibly engaging and immaculate with what it depicts, and that, put simply, is the sport of boxing. Hajime no Ippo has no fancy power systems, no energy blasts, no unconventional magic power-ups. The power-ups in Ippo consist on hard, grueling workouts, intense discipline to get it done, and to continue moving forward even when being punched in the mouth. Now, obviously, being a work of fiction, many things are exaggerated. The fights themselves kind of slow down time, allow us into the headspace of the characters. They show us explicit details of the moves and the power and strategy of the characters and what they're using. But it's not exaggerated in the way, say, Baki the Grappler is exaggerated, where you have people so strong they can basically crack the pavement with a punch. Now, don't get me wrong, I love me some Baki. But there was something incredibly special about watching a show that embraced its grounded nature and took you within the world of competitive fighting. In fact, Ippo is considered a sports anime as well, because it truly is all about every aspect of boxing. From the training, learning about your opponent, the anxiety before a match, the build up to it, and of course, the fight itself. The intensity and realism of putting your heart, mind, and body on the line. Even in a professional setting, you can still die or injure yourself for life when you enter into a fight. And it takes all of this into consideration and brings you into a world of strength and belief and the rewarding feeling of working your ass off, putting it all on the line, and finally, after you've sweat and bled your heart out, feeling that exhilaration that eventually comes with a victory. I remember watching a bit of Hajime no Ippo a long time ago, and I had always meant to go back to it or watch it from the beginning again, and I listened to a lot of motivational workout mixes in the gym, and Ippo appears in a handful of them, so I decided to binge through as much of the anime as I could in a day and get back to you guys with my thoughts. Well, I made it about 22 episodes in, and I already feel like I have so much to say. Ippo hit me in a way that I have been looking for for quite some time, and I think its beauty is within its simplicity. Ippo as a character is a boy that begins the series getting beat up by a bunch of bullies. He's bailed out by a passerby who happens to be an experienced boxer named Takamura. Ultimately, Ippo ends up at the boxing gym that Takamura goes to and is inspired by the strength and confidence that these guys here have. Not so that he can get revenge on his bullies, but he discovers there is so much potential within him that he had no idea was even there. The motivation to defend yourself is something I can relate to, being bullied in school myself, and that was the reason that I got into martial arts when I was a teenager. Admittedly, it was not something I stuck with after high school, but during that time, I remember strapping on the sparring gear, getting into the ring with other students, or even my sensei, and it had him beat the ever-living shit out of me. Which was good, it was a rite of passage. When Ippo has his first sparring match with Miata, even though he's obviously a novice and loses, there's a journey of discovery within the fight itself, and I've always said the best shonen that focus on battles are able to tell stories through the fights themselves. Whether it's what's happening within a character's head, something they're striving to achieve, or even a development or shift within themselves that happens through the course of the match. As Ippo gets going and starts to have more fights, this is used to progress who he is as a character as he learns real boxing tactics match to match, whether it's bobbing and weaving, clinching, avoiding a flicker jab, all of these things that you would teach and that would come up in fighting, but it's done through each new opponent that Ippo faces. And Ippo himself has that traditional Japanese protagonist pureness to him. He wants to be a boxer, he wants to get stronger, and he wants to pursue strength, but only to better himself and become a master at his craft. There is nothing malicious within his desire to fight. And when it comes to fighting, it can often be kind of brushed off or seen as a lowbrow thing, an outlet for toxic men to beat the shit out of each other. But there's something much more to it than that, that I think people who have been around the sport know and that Ippo exemplifies within its storytelling. It's that fighting teaches you about yourself. 
it lets you know where you stand amongst others. It lets you know the honesty of your physical capabilities. It forces you to think quickly and make split seconds decisions that you have to live with. It forces you to be more accurate. It forces you to move accordingly. It's something where if you make a mistake, there are consequences. It puts you in a place where you need to create that mind over matter mentality, a place where you have to fight through pain, believe in yourself, especially without the help of others there. And it allows you to be competitive in a positive way that is not putting other people down. Each fighter knows how hard it is to train, how hard it is to get stronger, and the sheer randomness of a match that combines technique with raw talent, but without any guarantee as to which will prevail. All Ippo wants to do is learn as much as he can and become great. He might not be the most complex character out there, but there is sincerity and power within his archetype that sometimes I feel is lost within people and within storytelling. Ippo represents discipline and discovery. Ippo represents the willpower that is somewhere within all of us, but that most are too afraid to reach into. Ippo starts from nothing. He knows nothing about boxing. He only has his willpower and, sure, some built-in strength from working on a fishing boat, but in comparison to his peers like Takamura, he's weak. I mean, Ippo is in the featherweight division, for crying out loud but they still all train and work hard together, and Takimura might give Ippo some shit, but it's all in a loving and caring way. They're a team at the end of the day, and they're all in this together. And the show doesn't stray away from some of the extreme lengths that fighters go to before matches. When we see Takamura suffer from hunger pains, you know, leaning himself out, or scenes where Ippo trains so hard that his knuckles bleed, but the other thing that I love about this series is that it gives you some time spent with the opponents as well. There are some times where Ippo is fighting someone and I kind of want the other person to win. Not because I dislike Ippo, but I just resonate with their story. And even though Ippo wins a majority of the time, within his matches there are true stakes and back and forths and the uncertainty of how everything is going to turn out. The scene that got to me personally was Ippo's fight with Kabashi. Kabashi knows that Ippo is a lot stronger than him, and he's legitimately worried about the fight. He tries spying on Ippo beforehand to get an idea how he fights, but it all comes from a place of insecurity about his own strength. But to make up for that, Kabashi puts on a ton of effort into dragging out the fights and getting in hits where he can, keeping close so his opponent can't put as much power into their punches, and basically winning by the point system, letting the timer run out on all the rounds and having the judges decide. He throws in a ton of jabs to keep his distance and by the end would land more hits than his opponent. But during this fight with Ippo, his strategy it is working. Ippo struggles to get any solid hits on Kabashi, and Kabashi keeps pushing his endurance round after round, keeping it going. But then there's this moment, a moment where the right opportunity arrives and Kabashi throws a hard right and it connects. Then. All of a sudden, all that fear, all that anxiety, every bit of panic starts to fade, and not only does he feel like he can actually win, he feels like he can get a knockout, that he is strong enough to do it. And though this goes against his entire strategy, a new life is fueled within Kabashi, and he just goes for it. And uh, he gets knocked out by Ippo and loses the match. But here's the thing. He knew that he would have won by points, and he felt something within himself that went against it. And I don't believe it was ill-sighted of him or even a stupid decision, because part of this whole thing is giving your all and trying. It's not even about the victory, it's about what you use within yourself and how far you're willing to push yourself to get there. Going for a knockout failed against Ippo, but within that moment, he gave himself the confidence to allow access into a completely different style of fighting. He grew as a fighter and a person because of his match with Ippo. Afterwards, Kabashi breaks down into tears, thinking he was stupid for doing it, but he's reassured that he wasn't stupid. He did it for a dream, a dream that can still happen. Maybe it didn't happen this time, but maybe this time was the push he needed to plant the seed to make it happen next time. I got so choked up and emotional here because 
This is the kind of message that needs to be heard and isn't shown enough in media. You are fighting for a reason and you are going to fail many, many, many times before you reach it. But within each failure, you learn something, something about the situation and something more importantly about yourself. Ippo helped Kabashi discover something about himself and gave him the confidence to try. And, and I just felt so connected to this moment. And as somebody who has failed over and over, you know, with so many different aspects, I, I looked at the scene and even this whole show, and it all reminds me of why I started in the first place. It reminds me to give my all, to believe that I can do it, and to continue to get stronger. Not with malicious intent, but with the purity to see just how strong I can eventually become. And you can attribute that not just to physical strength, you can attribute that to everything. And that's why Hajime no Ippo made me fucking cry, dude. Now, going forward with the show, I, I know this is only the beginning, and there's a lot to Ippo's story. I, I cannot say if I will eventually read the manga, because nearly 2,000 chapters is really intimidating. Not to mention the amount of people that want me to read One Piece, which is already a super long manga. I, I don't know. I, I will continue the anime, though, at my own pace. Maybe not make reviews, but if there is a moment or an episode or a fight that I feel like talking about, I might just make another video on it. Other than that though, I just really needed a series like this right now, and if you've never seen it, maybe it's time you got into the ring and watched Hajime no Ippo. Anyways guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts and feelings on this series is, if it's inspired you in any way, and if you prefer the anime or the manga for experience it. Please like and comment on the video to help it in the algorithm. If you want to support the channel on a deeper level, I do have a Patreon and channel memberships turned on, links down in the description. And other than that, thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll talk to you next time.